you do? Westcott, you said you were going to arrange a hearing with a judge who would go easy on me. Look, there's not a judge in Landview that wouldn't throw the book at you. Take it easy, Jeffrey. You framed Mary Lynn Dennison. Now, what makes you think that she should pay for your slimeball criminal activities? Hey, you watch your mouth, counselor! Sit down. Okay, folks, let's review the facts. Mr. Van Buren here was caught with a little more than a gram of cocaine in his pocket. Several more grams of very high quality, I might add, were found in his room. Now, his case has landed on Judge Westcott's docket which guarantees him a minimum sentence of five to ten years in prison. Five to ten. That's about standard for Westcott. Oh, oh, I get it. I'm going to prison anyway, so you figure why not just be a real good guy and take the rap for her while I'm at it? Well, actually, we're prepared to make a, a one-time only offer. You admit you frame Mary Lynn, and the DA is willing to go easier on you. They suckered you into this? I'm paying you to be on my side. I mean, what the hell is going on here? I had no idea you'd be offered a deal, but it's something we should at least consider. What? You're fired! Get out of here! Brent, listen to me. Now, you made a big mistake getting involved with drugs. Don't compound it by making an innocent girl suffer, too. You have a chance to make up for at least some of the damage you've done, and in return, we're willing to go the extra distance for you. Just. Get off my back, lady. I suggest you think about it. Come on, Giordano. You're blowing your whole future, you idiot. Don't waste your breath, Victor. You're gonna have plenty of time to think about this uh, lost opportunity in prison. Of course, by then, it's just gonna be much too late. Okay. Okay. Get the cops back in here. I'll admit to it all. Stashing the coke in Mary Lynn's purse and causing the accident. I'll tell it all. But you have got to promise me that I won't do hard time. Yo, oh, I tell you, Buster is one fine cook. And you have got some willpower there, girl. I mean, I was sitting there feeding my face, and you just didn't have anything. <laughs> well, I have to watch my figure. You kidding me, right? Your figure looks just fine to me. Thanks, but if I want to keep it that way, it's no biscuits and no syrup for me. Well, what's the matter? Didn't you get any exercise in Landview? Actually, I didn't. Really? Well, I tell you, there is plenty of physical activity out here at the ranch. And I bet you if you just dived right in, you wouldn't have to worry about uh, your figure at all. And you could eat Buster's biscuits, too. Oh, sounds good. <laughs> hey, uh, do you have any real plan mapped out with Clint? Uh, I mean, uh, what kind of training are you going to take care of? We don't really have much of a schedule yet. You know, Clint's so busy running around here, proving that he can do everything, I, I'm just not really sure I feel needed. Oh, you're needed, all right. But, but I know what you mean about Clint. He sure seems happy out here, right? And, and relaxed, too. On the other hand, you uh, seem a little uptight. I'm not uptight. Oh. <laughs> all right, I guess I just, I feel a little like a third wheel, you know? I don't, I don't mean to complain about the whole thing. Oh, no, no, I know what you mean. Hey, Vicky and Clint, they're acting like they're, uh, couple on a honeymoon or something like that and you don't have any friends out here that you can call and go out with hey if i were in your shoes i'd feel exactly the same way believe me but once time goes by and you settle in i'm sure everything's gonna be fine you get in some kind of routine but in terms of adjusting to uh, ranch life like this I, I don't know about that thanks a lot i mean i might not know anything about uh, mending fences or roping cows but i do know how to ride oh well i did it once or twice when i was a kid Side saddle? No, not side saddle. <laughs> Actually, it was English. Really? Oh, well, that's neat. Uh, you, you plan on going out in the desert a lot in, in that skirt and those shoes? No, actually, I hadn't planned on going in the desert at all. Oh, well, then you're not planning on ever leaving the house, are you? Because in case you hadn't noticed, there's nothing but desert all around here. <laughs> I tell you what, if uh, you plan on going out and, and getting a pair of jeans and some boots, then I would be more than happy to show you how to uh, ride a western saddle, and maybe we can go out and do a little riding later. Where do I get the boots? General store. It's about 15 miles down the road. Why don't you pack up your purse and your credit cards, and we'll go get some of the stuff. Okay, sounds good to me. You teach me how to rope cows, too? Uh, first, I think we'll start with something a little easier, like uh, a fence post. That doesn't move around as much. Then we go on to cows. First things first. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm always telling Clint. Yeah, well, does he listen to me?
Nancy and I take turns with you. Oh, Jeffrey, come in. Hello, Tom. Is Mary Lynn here? No, I'm afraid she isn't. Jeff, hi. Were you able to do something for Mary Lynn? I'm happy to say I was. <laughs> I wanted to give her the good news myself, but now you'll have the pleasure. Well, uh, sit down, please. Yeah. Rafe Gerritsen, Detective Giordano, and myself spent the morning with Brent Van Buren and his attorney. I was hoping that he would volunteer information that would clear Mary Lynn's name. But he still says that the accident was Mary Lynn's fault and the cocaine was hers, huh? That's right. Oh. Until Rafe offered him a deal. Clear Mary Lynn in return for a reduced sentence. He agreed. And the drop, all the charges against Mary Lynn, drugs, reckless driving, are going to be dropped. Oh, Jim! <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. We are indebted to you. Oh, the DA deserves most of the credits. He agreed to the plea bargain. Oh, great. Tom, come on. What's the matter? That's wonderful. Yes, I know it is. I just... I just don't like the idea of that Van Buren kid getting off so easy. Oh. You know, I can't say I'm thrilled about the ID either. But it was the only way to get the truth out of him. He's a real prince of a kid, isn't he? Do you realize our daughter could have been dead if it hadn't been for him? As it is, she may spend the rest of her life scarred. And he gets off with just a slap on the wrist. I know, I'm, I know, Tom, but maybe he learned a lesson from this. I doubt it. I doubt it, Lee. Well, you know what? Then he'll get himself in trouble again. And this time, Herb will not be so willing to plea bargain. I hope you're right. Uh, Jeff, does uh, Mary Lynn have to appear in court? No, no, no. I can take care of the whole thing myself. In oh. fact, the assistant DA is drawing up the papers right now, and we can file them later on this afternoon. By then, Mary Lynn Dennison will have no record. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you for all you've done. I appreciate it. Well, it's a dangerous thing to say to a man who's about to drop your bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you all later on in the day as soon as I figure out what's happening. Oh, Good. great. Thanks Thank a you. lot, Jeff. Thanks again. <laughs> oh, boy, that is perfect timing, isn't it? Marilyn could use this right now. And this should do it. Uh, it should make her happy. Boy. <laughs> I am so happy your name has been cleared. Tom, do you realize what this means? We don't have to abide by Judge Westcott's rules anymore. We don't have to live together. I don't know, Cord. I still think I should have bought these jeans a size larger. Uh, I don't think so, ma'am. They look just fine to me. It's all right. They're new yet. They're a little stiff. You work them in, they'll be just fine. Well, uh, let's see if I can get these boots on by myself. All right. You want to do that? Give it a shot. Okay. That's right, just hold on. Use the straps right there, you got it? Pulling on the straps. Yep. Oh. There you go. Okay. Number two. Got it? Yeah. Had to go through this every day. Yeah, that's all right. Once you get used to it, it's a piece of cake. Okay. How'd it feel? Uh, uh, I don't know, Court. I think I might be better off than tennis shoes. No, hey, come on, it's supposed to be a little tight at first. Yeah. That's all right, they felt okay at the store, right? Yeah, they did. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they just feel kind of weird now. Oh, yeah? I know, I have to walk bow-legged, right? That's No, no, you don't. You just walk normally, naturally, okay? Just one foot, then the other. It's walking. It's just in boots. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. There is nothing natural about walking in these things. Oh, come on. Just pretend you're in high heels or something. You know, shake your fine thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, don't worry about it. You'll, get it. <laughs> You'll be a cowgirl in no time. Yeah, well, thanks. I think I'll try and get these things off. Where's the boot jack? Ugh. Oh, boot jack now. Well, I'm surprised you even know what that is. Well, we had a boot jack for our English riding boots, too. Oh, you did? Well, I'm sorry. This is pioneer country, so we, uh... Here, tell you what. Give me your boot. Ah, I'm gonna pull, all right? And what I want you to do is take that other boot, put it along my backside, and push. I'm gonna pull. Ready? <laughs> Count of three. Ready? Oh. You ready? One. Two. Whoa, we're gonna get your feet on the bat here. One, <laughs> two, three, go! Oh, oh. oh God! Lord! What's going on? Uh, I, I was just showing Sarah how to, uh, Sarah how to be a cowgirl. 
Well, you look the part, Sarah. Yeah, she sure does, uh, doesn't she? Uh, where's Clint? He's talking to the foreman. You should have come to Rainbow Butte with us. It is breathtaking. Oh, I bet it is. Well, once Sarah breaks in her shirt and her jeans and her new boots, then I will show her how to use a Western saddle, and I will take her out there myself. Jessica's toys, I guess. Oh. Vicky forgot it when she packed. Now, listen, we're gonna take it easy. No running in the snow, no throwing snowballs, anything oh. like that, all right? And you misbehave, we're coming right back in the house. Yes. Got it? Yes, Mom. Jabbar, three seconds, gets the ball, lift. Oh! Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't give up the day job. Here's a copy of Van Buren's deposition. Uh, is it okay to release a copy to his lawyer? Sure, but his lawyer was here. He heard the whole thing. Maybe he's gonna start looking for technicalities. I got a feeling Van Buren's lawyer would be happy to see that kid spend a couple of years behind bars. Hmm. So? You feeling good about helping Mary Lynn? You busted your hump trying to clear her name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm pleased. Well, is something wrong to you, Donna? It's personal, sir. I'll no, be well, hold on. Why don't you tell me about it? Maybe I can help. Well, you're always giving me advice. I'd like to return the favor. Remember when Billy came in with the eviction notice? You got evicted. Why didn't you just borrow no, the money? No, no, Billy came up with the money. A thousand bucks? Where'd mm. she get it? That's what's bothering me. She says she won it playing poker. So you don't believe her? Sounds kind of fishy, huh? Especially since I've never seen my sister play cards. <sighs> I want to believe her, but past experience tells me... I don't know. I love her so much, but I don't understand her at all. And believe me, I've tried. And she's not, I mean, she's not that much younger than I am, but it's like she's a totally different generation. Maybe it's because she never really knew Mom. She died when Billy was pretty young, and... Dad just disappeared. Billy always resented being disciplined by me. We were always in a battle about something. Listen, why don't we go get a sandwich and talk about this some more? You know, I want to find out about you having to be mother and father to Billy, because it's something I, I may have to do myself. Oh, Captain, you shouldn't No, be... I haven't given up on the search for Delilah. I... Just starting to be more realistic about it. I know that my chances of finding her are slim and none. I hope to God I still do. Okay. You buy the sandwiches, and I'll give you the benefit of my experience. And bring along your file on Delano. We'll go over that, too. Hey, Pumpkin, what a nice surprise. What are you doing here? We're on our way to the park, but she wanted to stop by and see Daddy. Oh, mwah. Cordero, do you mind telling me the real reason that you came to Arizona? Well, I already told you that, Vicky. Uh, you guys are having a lot of fun out here. I just want to be part of it. Yes, I know that's what you said, but that's not the real reason, is it? Uh, well, I, I hope that Clint believes that it is. Oh, I think he does. I don't. 
Well, Asa kind of pushed me towards the airport. Asa? Asa was thrilled that you were staying in Landview. Yeah, he was. But he was also very worried about Clint. You know, coming out here, maybe the ranch wouldn't live up to his expectations. Maybe he would really have to face the reality that he was blind. And we both figured that that would be tough on him. Yeah. Well, to tell you the truth, I was worried about the same thing myself, although I never voiced it quite like that. However, I am happy to report that your grandfather and I may have been wrong. Are you serious? You, you think maybe we were? Yes. In the short time that we've been here, Clint... His attitude has changed completely. He's, he's more relaxed. He feels in control. I mean, no, he is in control. He's in control for the very first time since the surgery. Now, surely you've noticed the difference. Oh, oh yeah. Of course I have. I, I just wasn't sure whether or not it was some kind of an act. No, it's not. I would know. And I also think that this positive attitude is going to have a very good effect on his therapy with uh, Sarah. Oh, well, let, let's hope for that. Listen, I, I would still love to stick around for a while, if that's all right with you. Are you kidding? I'd love it. I love having you here. And I'm so grateful for your concern for your father. Well, I tell you, he's always been there for me. And he always will be. So will I. I know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, hon? Where'd my son get away to? Oh, uh -huh. I haven't gone anywhere, Clint. I'm right here waiting for my next assignment, boss. Oh. Well, it's uh, time to hit the saddle, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, you want a riding partner? I'm ready. Good. Be tickled pink to ride stirrup to stirrup with your son. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Buchanan. George? Sorry, sir. Hey, look, it's, it's no big deal, huh? Look, I've, I've thrown some snowballs at trees and missed and hit people, too. You were aiming at the trees, weren't you? Guess I'm a lousy shot. Yeah, well, tell you what. Why don't you uh, and your friend head up over to the woods and do some practicing with the trees, okay? And do, do me a favor. Some people walk by, don't take any chances, okay? You mean you're not going to have me arrested? No, no, you just <laughs> stick with the trees. I promise. Okay. I hope you're not hurt, sir. No, it's no damage done. It's all right. He's a knuckle <laughs> uh, You were wonderful with him. He didn't mean any harm. I know he didn't. I guess it's just my day to explode at people. I mean, first you, mm -hmm. and then that nice little boy. You know, I'd hate it if somebody yelled at Milagro like that. I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't mean to. No more talk about babies, okay? Good. You won't hear me even mention the word. In fact, let's talk about something more constructive. Like some changes around land fair. What kind of changes? Well, I was thinking about painting the library pink. What do you think? Pink? You certainly are a cutie, little Michael. Yes, it was Briggs. 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 What? What, what is that? W V L E or the Banner? Well, Briggs is the uh, Briggs is the Banner. The Banner. Yep. The Banner. I can't keep all these names straight. I can't wait till you just work for the Banner full time. <sighs> you, uh, <clears throat> you realize now that the uh, judge will lift his decree. We no longer have to uh, have to uh, live together here for Mary Lynn's sake. Uh, I'm just I suppose you'll be anxious to get back to your, uh, your place at the Holden Towers. Must be rather inconvenient for you, uh, traveling all the way out here, right? Well, actually, it's not really. It's just a short way from town, and I sort of enjoy the peace and quiet. But I'm sure you want your privacy back, right? Well, uh, you've been very respectful of my privacy, and I, uh, I appreciate that. Well, I've uh, tried to, Tom. <laughs> I mean, it's been pretty difficult after living alone for all this while, but sure enjoyed having Mary Lynn around. Well, I suppose we'll have to uh, prepare ourselves for her uh, disappointment. Yeah, well, at least she'll be thrilled that all these charges have been dropped. Yeah, but you know, she has come to count on her mother. Uh, a girl, uh, a girl needs a mother. And, uh, 
Well, I think you've been a wonderful influence on her. I really do. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Well, I mean it. I mean it. Now, mm -hmm. uh, if, of course, Mary Lynn can come visit you anytime she likes. Um, you know, if she wants to stay with you a couple of times a week, then uh, that's all right with me. It'll be fine. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have her. <laughs> well, I suppose she'd rather sleep in her own bed here, but then on the other hand, she seems to be very comfortable with you. Mm. Seems an awful burden to put on her, you know? Then when she's with you, she's going to be thinking about me. When she's with me, she's going to be thinking about you. <laughs> if it's all right with you, I... Well, I just thought maybe I could stay here a little while longer. Uh, does that seem like a ridiculous suggestion? No. Oh. No, no, as a matter of fact, that'd be fine. I'm, I'm sure Mary Lynn would be very pleased. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. You've grown into a real handsome fella, Cordero. I'm sure your mom would be real proud of you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know what happened to her, right? Yeah. Hard to believe she's really gone. I can close my eyes and see that smile and hear that laugh. She was one fine woman. Yeah, yeah, she was. Hey, listen, what are you doing out here, huh? Mr. Buchanan hired me on yesterday. Oh. I come in to ask the boss about them fences that need mending, if you're a mind to have me do it. I'd kind of like to know uh, how you and Cord know each other. Sounds like you're old buddies. George. You mean you haven't told him? Well, I didn't want him to think I was trading on family connections. Family? This is my Uncle George Vasquez. My mother's younger brother. Investigate the DA's office here. I haven't been able to find a breath of corruption. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm so relaxed about having the special prosecutor looking over my shoulder. Ah, uh, Jennifer, would you be good enough to refile these? And has there been any word from Arnie? Oh, he just called. He's on yeah. his way back from the Mountain View Clinic, but uh, he didn't turn up anything. Shoot. Well, I've done a check on Kellogg. It turns out that he is a highly respected psychiatrist and administrator. He's had no problems with the law. He pays his taxes yeah, on time. Yeah, we came up with the same thing. I mean, after Melinda said that she witnessed a murder in his office, but I think a murder did take place, and I think Kellogg is the key. Herb, one of the cops at Holden Towers, gave me some very disturbing information about Melinda. Oh, that she thought she was dancing with Mr. Peck? She told me about that. With that kind of behavior, Herb, I've got to question her stability. Now, I am finding it difficult to believe anything that this lady is telling us. Excuse me, Dad, but we have to talk. Well, Cassie. Hello. Uh, this is Donald Lamar. Yes, we've met, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but Dad, come on, what are you doing to Melinda? I beg your pardon? Well, according to the National Intruder, your office is investigating a prominent socialite recently released from the Compton Clinic in Ohio in connection with the hit-and-run death of a Mr. Peck. Now, this is obviously Melinda, but why? Come on, Dad, how can you possibly think she has anything to do with that man's death? George, you're saying that you're Maria's brother? But... When I asked you if you were related to Maria Vasquez, you said no. You did that, George? I said the name Vasquez was about as common as Smith in this part of the country. What you did was lie to my wife. Would you like to explain why? Where did you get this baby? This is my baby, Max. This is Milagro. Young lady, don't touch that child. He's my child. What are you doing with him?
really nice of you to come visit, Larry. I, I know we've sort of lost touch recently. Well, I left messages. You never responded. Well, I was either busy or upset or both. Yeah, yeah, well, that's certainly no surprise, judging from the gossip in the National Intruder. Gossip? What gossip? All right. Prominent socialite, suspect in hit-and-run death of Harold Peck. Yeah, quite a coincidence, isn't it? I mean, the, the nervous little man that lied for Dr. Kellogg should suddenly get hit on the street, especially after he was prematurely released from the sanitarium. Prematurely? Well, I think so. He didn't seem ready to go to me. Well, Melinda, you hardly knew the man. You only saw him for about five... Did you go back to Mountain View? Look, forget about that article. It's, it's just the usual stuff. Um... Besides, you're not really concerned with my personal problems anymore, are you? Hey, that was your choice, not mine. Look, what, whatever happened? Why are you... Why'd you put so much distance between us? Was it because I... I was confused? I, I doubted the day you claimed you saw that murder in Dr. Kellogg's office? Oh, claim? Oh, come on, Melinda. I'm on your side. No matter how it seems or what I say or what I do, I... Rock. Larry, hi. It's about time you got up. I, uh, I mean, I, I walked by your room and the door was closed, and I uh, didn't know whether you'd left or not. Yeah, well, I didn't close my eyes till around 4 a.m., so is that coffee hot? It sure is, baby. There you go. Larry, you want some? No, not really. Uh, well, no. Nah. Can you explain to me why... You... You never even got in touch with me since you've been in town. You would have been here, what, a week? What? You never called. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I've been so busy, I didn't want to call you till I could make dinner reservations or something. I didn't know the two of you were uh, friends. Apparently we're not. Although I was married to his mother. Well, um, I have a couple of calls to make, so... Uh, I guess this seems like a good time. Or is this article just a bunch of sensational nonsense? Somebody leaked information to the intruder. Now, Cassie, I'm very busy. And I am sorry to interrupt, but, Dad, this is important. Yeah, do you think that it could wait until after our meeting? Okay, fine. I will wait outside. Excuse me. Uh, Cassie, that's all right. Listen, I've got another appointment, and your father and I will talk later. That won't be necessary. It's all right. But no, Donald, Donald, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry uh, about the intrusion. My daughter tends to be impulsive, and she loves her aunt very much. So. It's all right. I understand. I don't believe you. Where do you come off barging in like that? Firing question in front of Donald Lamar. I was concerned about my aunt. She's oh. probably freaking out right now, Dad. And all you're worried about is your image. Well, I don't mind admitting that I don't like looking foolish in front of the special prosecutor. But if you had the least bit of discretion, you could have waited until I explained that your sister, your aunt, is no longer a suspect. Oh, so there is truth to all of this. I am not at liberty to discuss this case. Is this why you were conferring with Melinda the other night at the what? basketball? Or perhaps explains why she went to pieces that night? Cassie, I don't know how to put it any more bluntly than I'm doing now, except to ask you to leave. I am not going to discuss the case with you. Okay, fine. Be that way. Then I'm going to go to Melinda, and I'm going to get the details from her. <laughs> and I can't figure out why you're keeping this from me in the first place. This whole thing just doesn't make sense. It's yet. none of your business. Try that it's logic. My aunt. She is my business. I'm concerned about her. Cat! Herb, you're too young to have a coronary. I'm aging by the second. If you're worried about Mr. Lamar, I'm, I'm worried sure about that daughter of mine getting into the middle of this and mucking it up. Now, get Peter in here. I want to know who's talking to the press. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. I, uh, I, I finished my filing. I'll go back. Herb. Yes, Jennifer. Never mind. I'm going to start screaming my head off for the police if you don't get away from this carriage. Fine, I'll scream for the police myself. Oh, 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 hold it, hold it, both of you. Take a breath here, take a breath. Oh, Max? Look, excuse me. Hi, my name is Max Holt, and this is my fiance, Tina Roberts. Ma'am, please understand, she recently lost her own child, and apparently there is there's a similarity between the two. They look alike, your child and hers. Well, first of all, Michael is not my child. Of course not. He's my Gina. child. 
sorry, please, go on. I'm a babysitter. I'm working for a couple. The mother is ill, the father is busy. I was hired to take the child out for some air. Well, well who are they? Where do they live? Well, I'm not going to give you that information, young lady. Ma'am, ma I assure you, we're not kidnappers or anything like that. Like I said, it is just the similarity between the two children that has triggered this reaction in my fiancé. Look, I'm... We're very sorry we bothered you. Come on over here. Max, what are you doing? What if I'm right and she's wrong and this is my baby? Max, you've got to find out where this baby lives. Uh... Uh, could you, could you, uh, uh, what was your name? Olson, Erica Olson. I'm with the Landview Babysitting Service. We're bonded, reliable, and we have a superb reputation. Well, I'm, sh I'm sure you do. Ma'am, is there something you could say to my fiancé to assure her that you're positive this baby belongs to the couple that hired you? Of course he does. The mother loves him very much. Really, I, I can't continue with this. Please, will you make sure this woman does not follow me when I leave the park? Honey, I'm sorry, but... Wait. Getting...